Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. We're talking the family, we chose this one. This is episode 332, Crimson Tide from 1995, Roll Damn Tide. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too, and this episode's brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Their sub-X subsonic expanding bullets deliver big-time results without a big bang. Shout out to Hornady. Shout out to Hornady, and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. I think I might have mentioned, maybe, I don't know if it's on air or off air, there's a lot of submarine movies. Basically, there's a lot. Basically, I've seen none of them. You I haven't? Sure I really? Was... This seems like up your alley. I mean, like, no, like there again, submarine movies usually aren't film, but... Uh, they seem like there'd be something that you'd kind of be into. No, they're like, they're like, I mean, they're dad I, movies. Yes, I, I guarantee you my dad watches about like, I feel I'm like sure, I, right? That's what, okay. That's what I was thinking. Mm, yeah. I feel like he probably watched this, but like, I don't know if like, like, I like this movie a lot. I think it's very good, but it's also like, it feels very serious for, for like what we're doing. Like, it feels like it doesn't, doesn't it, it feels serious at points. Like the movie is serious, but it's not that serious because it's it's about saving the world against nuclear against nuclear footballs but like it doesn't have like the crazy over the top stuff i don't know it's, it's like a, i'm just like there's a submarine in fast and the furious mm-hmm yeah but like it's like bill clinton's the president even though like the god the the you know the the aggressor is a fictional character it's just like huh all right they don't huh. mention bill clinton in the no, but they, they show, like, the president, they show, like, a, a clip of Bill Clinton. They don't oh, mention okay. my name, but like, he, there's that. a picture okay. of him on screen where it's just, okay. like, talking about, like, the president of the United States or whatever. Um, I was like, oh, that's interesting that, like, they don't have, like, because, like, like, every other movie, like, Independence Day, it's not like, this is a Bill Clinton movie. It's just, like, no. It's, I was going to say Independence Day is my example. Like, why isn't it, what's his name from Independence Day? Like, that's yeah. who they should year be. for Pullman. Had you seen, like, have you seen, before I get into the back, like, have you seen any submarine movies? Yeah. And I also read The Sinking of the Bismarck, too. Oh, look at you reading books. Where's yeah. your lottery pod? <laughs> Ex- yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what submarine movies have you seen? Uh, Some of All Fears, right? That's the Tom Clancy one. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, no, no, that's not, no. Wait, what's the one? Hunt that's... for Red October is the that's submarine. Our, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Hunt for Red October. And I think Some, I've read Hunt for Red October. is also Red Tom Clancy, October. but yes. it's not a submarine. It's not a submarine. Well, they're, they're all fucking, they're all named Goofy shit. I read a ton I of know. Tom Clancy as a kid, too. You know that Tom what? Clancy almost owned the Vikings? Really? How? When the Vikings Tell me the story. In the nineties, there's not really much of a story. It was in the, the Vikings documentary. Okay, okay I, was Vikings like, I was hoping. But like when the Vikings were selling in the nineties, like there was a moment where Tom Clancy like like he had like the secret push to like buy the Vikings, and then I don't remember exactly what happened, but basically like he like ha- he held a press conference like in a Viking shack and like I'm gonna own the Vikings, and then like did they it? They wanted like something slightly different, and he, he backed out, and so like. Ziggy Wolf and everybody like bought, but like, or maybe it was like it was nineties or two thousands. But like, whenever Ziggy Wolf bought the team, there was like a moment where like Tom Clancy was like, "I'm gonna own the Vikings," and it's just like Wait, that would have been Clancy, the Tom Clancy. <laughs> yeah, that would have been like honestly the sickest shit ever. Can you imagine like all the Tom Clancy movies that would come out that would have had like Randy Moss in them, or mm-hmm. the other way of like you know like all right, so there's a nuclear warhead, but Randy Moss is the guy who has to stop it. It's like. Okay. No, but like we see this all the time. Like, there's all kinds of like wrestlers in movies, or even sports athletes and things in movies too. So like, you don't think Tom Clancy would have been like, if I own the Vikings, Kirk Cousin is gonna be fucking one of these guys, right? Like, not like the like not like the the le- the star, but he's gonna be in it and like an extra that like has a line and like probably like stops one bad guy. It would be yeah. promotion. It would, it would just be it. a weird world. It would be very, very strange. I would love it too, and then it would be like it would be like the hunt for purple October, the hunt oh. for purple for February. Mm. Oh. I looked on Letterboxd for submarine. I looked for lists. There's a there's a list called Bob's Submarine Film List by Bob Hovey. I hope it's all and, sandwiches and not actual submarines. God, I wish. Sort of my film popularity. Oh, these aren't really like okay. So. Mm, I mean, Fate of Furious is on the list, but like Hunt for Red October. Like, I'm looking for movies that are like straight up like submarine movies. Crimson Tide, Hunter Killer, which is what Kate Hudson mentioned. K19, The Widowmaker, U571, Black Sea, Kursk. Yeah. Down Periscope, comedy. 
Yeah, I've definitely seen a couple of these. Like, I don't know why, but like submarine movies feel very familiar. But it's dad shit. Right? It's dad shit. It's dad mm-hmm. shit. It's, it's weekend dad shit. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Crimson Tide, not streaming for free anywhere, which is kind of annoying. It feels like these should always be somewhere. It should be like, you need like a dad channel on Pluto. You absolutely do. And it would just, it would be a blend of James Bond movies. Like, I think there was, there was a James there Bond was a, Pluto There was definitely channel. a James Bond Pluto channel, but it would be a blend of James Bond movies, like Mel Brooks comedies. Um, oh, I, thought you were, I thought you were saying Mel Gibson. Also Mel Gibson, maybe. Also, yeah, pos- depending on your dad, Mel possibly comedies. Mel Gibson comedies and tragedies. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is Footage this is a weird cars. start, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah, like all of the like uh yeah, sorry. I could go down a giant rabbit hole of what I think. Like uh out what was it? Um Clint Eastwood. Like a whole section of Clint Eastwood on Saturdays would be nice for dads. We should curate the dad the dad channel. I think that you and I could put together a really good dad I have channel. No interest because I would never watch it. Like I mean, I would maybe. No, I, I mean, I don't want to watch it. I just want to make it for dads. You know how happy other people our age would be if like we curated a nice Pluto dad channel for them. That it's like, like the inverse of your your dive bar channel. It's the inverse of that, but we could like we could rig it so that it's nothing like super super related to them bringing up their political views Mm. you know what i mean like we could have it so you could put this on at christmas for your dad like in a room somewhere and he could be like damn i love that movie crimson tide just the dad channel is just fox news like it's already (laughs) no no, but we need we need a better one that's that won't make them as angry that's what i'm trying to say Mm. we could save the world joey from the nuclear missile strike Mm. if we just made strike of awkward Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners. Yeah. Of your dad being like, do you see this fucker? And Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, God, I don't want to talk about this, dad. Like, can we just talk about James Bond instead? To Like, please. Anything Anything, but that. Please. Yeah. Anyway, this is not streaming anywhere until the dad channel exists. If you've not seen Crimson Tide, on a U.S. nuclear missile sub, a young first officer, played by Denzel Washington, young. stages a mutiny to prevent his trigger-happy captain, played by Gene Hackman, from launching his missiles before confirming his orders to do so. And somehow Tony Soprano is there. Mm-hmm. And just for a little bit extra plot summary, this is a paragraph from Wiki. In post-Soviet Russia, civil war erupts as a result of the ongoing conflict in Chechnya. Military units loyal to Vladimir Radchenko, a Russian ultra-nationalist rebel, take control of a nuclear missile installation and threaten nuclear war if confronted. Yeah. Directed by Tony Scott, who did Top Gun, who did True Romance, who did the remake of Taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3, the one that Aaron Newworth could not say enough bad things about. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's Written right. by Michael Schiffer and Richard P. Henrik, who have done nothing of note that I could tell. Produced by Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer, who have basically produced every blockbuster of the last 30 years, like yeah. All the Pirates of the Caribbean, yep. The National Treasures, yep. blah, 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 blah. Jerry Bruckheimer, yeah. Shot by Darius Wolski, who did the Pirates movies, The Martian, Dark City, which we covered in this podcast, and a lot more. Budget of $53 million, made 157 at the box office, 89 on Rotten Tomatoes, 83 by the audience, boasting taut, high-energy thrills and some cracking dialogue. I'm going to skip a line for now. Crimson Tide finds director Tony Scott near the top of his action game. In that sense, this was an action movie that I didn't find, like, distractingly action-y. There's, like, a lot of character moments and dialogues and things like that. And it takes place in a small set. What's interesting to me, and not in a good or a bad way, is that with submarine movies, it's hard to show spatial relation. Like, they have, it's like, a tight space. Is that what you're so saying? No or no, no? Well, there's two there's two things that I am saying underwater that, I'm saying two different things. It's hard to show like submarines in pursuit because it's like they're just showing like on the little like radar. It's like, here's the missiles coming in. Right. It's just like they're alone. This reminds me of when you've seen the aviator, right? No, really, really, because it's a three hour movie. and I'm just like, mm, I, I, I own it. I bought it twice on DVD and then on Blu-ray. I've not seen it, but I, I should. I know. But OK, I it's. It's a really good movie, and you know the, how I feel about three-hour movies. And, mm-hmm, but I, mm-hmm. but I love um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Anyways, he's like shooting a movie. It's Howard Hughes, right? And one of the things is like he's shooting this plane movie, okay? And he's like, they're going really, really fast, but you can't tell because there's no clouds. You have no mm. perspective, and I think you're you're losing this 
in the same sense with the submarine, right? Because every time you see it's the water. outside of the boat, it's, it's just, just water. It's just water, and there's nothing in the water to be like, oh, this torpedo is coming at you fast unless you kind of strap the camera or viewpoint onto the torpedo as it's right. going along. To your other point, I have no idea how big this ship is. Like, it's big because there's a lot of guys on this boat, but, like, I have no idea. Like, I always picture a submarine as being small, but it's not small. Like, it's very big because there's a lot of shoulders, like, a lot of, lot of people on a ship. Have you ever have you ever been on a submarine? Like, not, like, on, like, no. the one, like, on a mission, Mm-mm. but, no, I mean, no, like, no, no, not no. even, like, one of those walks. It's like, oh, come nope. check out this. Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, have you? Yes, twice. And they're how both, big is it? It's, it's both bigger than you think and smaller than you think. Okay, I believe that. You know what I mean? Like, you're mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, there's, like, a lot of, like, space in here, but it's, like, a really big, tiny home at the same time, Joey, if that makes any sense. Sure. Okay. No, you know what I mean? Like, everything's, yeah. like, it's, like, a shelf and a shelf and, like, a really small sink because, like, they can't be huge. Right. Well, I mean, well, now I'm they can. Of, like, there's, so I was there's in, moments like, old in here ones. where, like, Denzel is working out and, like, he's just, like, running, like, wind Laps. sprints up and down, like, a, like a, it's a, the hall. a catwalk. It's the, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. the, yeah. So, like, I, th- I did the one in Hawaii and there was one that was parked outside of uh, the Science Center in Pittsburgh and the river, too, so. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, the backstory for this movie, there's basically two things of note. Okay, um, tell me. So, one of them relates to Walt's book. So, Tony Scott made Top Gun and had complete cooperation from the u.s navy because they're like whatever you want you got it and he thought that it was going to be the same thing here because he's like i had such a great experience there the navy i fucking made top gun yeah Mm -hmm. they're just gonna open their doors and be like whatever you want bud and then the navy was like hold on a minute your movie is about a mutiny on a ship that almost leads to nuclear war we don't think this paints us in a great light he's just like whatever could you possibly mean um so they were like this is objectionable and inaccurate and offered no assistance. Okay. Um, and so since they didn't, the French Navy allowed some of the use of their submarines and aircraft carrier for like the shots like of like actual ships in this. Apparently it was all the French Navy because the U.S. Navy was like, you cannot use any of our shit. When we see the Alabama emerge and we see the actual Alabama, that was Tony Scott. Uh, I don't know if this was like in like, – uh, sanctioned or not, but Tony Scott was in a helicopter and there's a separate camera unit on boats and they were both taking sh- shots of the ship. And there was something about how it like, because it was in public, the Navy couldn't stop them, stop them, but they didn't have official permission. Okay. But it was like publicly happening. And so they were like, yeah, we set it up. It. Yeah. Okay. But this is also like in Walt's book, like there's a whole section on military like branches of the military in film for years were like, we're not going to help fuck off. You're on your own. And then they realized, wait a minute, we can make ourselves look so good. And like, just run this propaganda machine. Like we want to and make top gun and recruit kids. They don't have to pay for all this promotion. They're just like, yeah, you can use our boats. You can use our planes. You can use our whatever. Like, let us just like, make sure that like you're painting us in a good light. So like, yeah. So as long as we don't look like shit bags, then like, yeah, this is just great promo that like, Mm -hmm. we don't have to cut those, Join the army commercials right now at the end of the school year, essentially. Yes. So there's a lot of information in Walt's book, You Are What You Watch, about like the military's like about face, no pun intended, on ah. how they dealt with that. Because like for a long time, they're just like, man, all these movies about us like stink. Like they're always like painting us as the villains. And it's just like, well, or like, you know, they're, they're, they're using ships that like don't look like our ships or whatever, or our planes or whatever. And they, they finally realize since now there's like entire branches of each military, like, or not branches, but like, they're like offices in each that like basically exclusively work with Hollywood Film. to make sure that they like look like it's all PR and stuff. Right. So yeah, exactly. It makes a ton of sense. But in here, they're just like, no, you've read your movie, right? Like it does not make us look good. You cannot, you do not have our permission. Also, to whatever. in that note, like is that. I respect that. That's like, hey, man, sure. if you're going to make me look like a shitbag, then no. But yeah. like, if you're going to be like, yeah, you're a fucking awesome dude. Yeah. Write all the movies you want about me. Mm-hmm. Cool. Like, I'm sure that they were like, hey, what if you change this to this and this? And she's like, well, that's not going to be in the movie anymore. And it's like, well, okay, then never mind. Yeah. Good luck finding a submarine, bud. But the other big thing of note, which is what I skipped over in the Rotten Tomatoes thing, is after Quentin Tarantino wrote True Romance, Tony Scott asked him to come in here to punch up this script. And he's like, I don't want to do it because it's not my idea. It's not my screenplay. I have nothing to do with this. I don't want to, like, inject myself in it. He's just like, come on. And Tarantino's like, okay. So can you guess the dialogue 
that Quentin Tarantino was responsible for in this movie. Oh, I don't, I mean, some of it now feels like him, but without watching it while I knew that, I was what I was is debating it? whether or not to tell you about this, but I didn't want to have it you was watch good. it. It was good. But did not tell me. Yes. It's every, it's, there's three things and they are all the most, ob- it's like 95% of this movie is dudes talking about military stuff. And then there's a conversation about Star Trek. Yes, and a conversation and it comes about the Silver, the Silver Surfer. Surfer. Yes, yes, I remember that. Okay, cool. And there's cool. James Gandolfini on the bus quizzing him about 1950s movie trivia. Yes, that's the Tarantino stuff. It's like, yeah, oh. no kidding. Oh, sh- oh, su- surprise. Yes, mm-hmm. it's like what? Because they're like you know crackling dialogue. It's just like no, this just feels like movie nerds. It's like like I get what it's doing and like it kind of fits, but also knowing it's Tarantino, it's just like. Yeah, okay. Not really a surprise. So They're like, what do you want to talk about in a submarine movie? He's like, Star Trek? Uh-huh. Duh. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, cool. You can write that. So Tarantino does this work, shows up on set, and Denzel's like, hey, man, let's talk about you using the N-word in your movies. No. Uh-huh. Is and this Tarantino, his actual story? And like uh-huh. Denzel confronts him like, hey, uh-huh. hey, And Tarantino cracker. got like, super embarrassed and was like, can we like go somewhere to talk about this? He says, no. Apparently, the quote is, Denzel says, no, if we're going to discuss it, let's discuss it now. And I don't know what comes of that. I don't think anything ever – like, I think they didn't have that conversation that day. But a couple years later, Denzel called Tarantino, apologized, asking if he's going to walk around with that grudge the rest of his life. And then, you know, said that Tarantino's a fine artist or whatever. Denzel's kid worked on uh, Django. So, like – it's just so funny to me, like, because you think about this is this is like the internet bully gets confronted in real life thing. Mm-hmm. It's especially, awesome. Especially, you know, I was talking about this with a couple of friends today, and we were talking about like pulp, in Pulp Fiction, where like Tarantino plays Jimmy, and he's like talking about the dead N word storage. It's like, why is this in the movie at all? Why is it Tarantino the one who says saying it? it? It's yes. like, yeah, yeah. This is so uncomfortable. Like, not that you can't use that word in movies, but like maybe you shouldn't be the one who's writing and directing writing and, and directing saying and saying it. it? <laughs> like, oh, I wrote an N word in for myself. Thanks. Mm-hmm. And there's also like the the I, it's not like trivia, but like Tarantino writes hand writes all of his screenplays first, and then like somebody else types it on the computer, and like he writes that word out fully by hand each in time. all like caps <laughs> it's just like i don't know man it's the like, only what, non-cursive on word here? in the script it's just like all shorthand besides just him capitalizing the n-word basically the only other trivia has nothing to do with either of those two things that's amazing that, though that was a at, really good story thank you for sharing mm-hmm. at one point they wanted to have or Al Pacino was offered and was considering the Gene Hackman role. That would be kind of sick. I would like that. When that was happening, it was nice to see Gene Hackman, though, because he retired so long ago. Like, you don't yeah, see him yeah. and stuff. And so, like, exactly. it was nice to see him. So, when Pacino was considering it, they had reached out to Brad Pitt, who apparently had publicly long, for a long time, wanted to work wanted with to say the N word. He wanted, to say... <laughs> he wanted so... to say the N word on film, so they called Tarantino. <laughs> So Brad Pitt, well, there's a Tarantino connection here too, Okay. but Brad Pitt was offered or was, you know, in talks or whatever to do the Denzel role, then Pacino backs out and so Brad Pitt leaves then. But then they would go on to both be in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, also with a Tarantino, Tarantino movie. movie. Yeah. Also in consideration for the role of Hunter, the Denzel role was my boy Tom Cruise, who was instead obviously, this year making... Obviously. Uh, Jerry Maguire, I think. That makes so much sense, though. Come on. Like, you you have him. You do Top Gun. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cast him for this. But you get Denzel, who I think is... I mean, you know, we all love Denzel, so... Of these these characters, you know, we had Brad Pitt. We had Tom Cruise and Denzel. I don't think you could have gone wrong with any of them. I think Denzel probably fits best. Or Tom Cruise would have worked, too, but it would have been a little bit different. Brad Pitt would have been different, but it would have worked. So let's talk about the movie now. I mean, we normally save the vehicle stuff for the end, but, like, we're so front-loaded with different vehicles, and then we're just on the sub for the entire time. So do you have a list of the vehicles so I only rem- in this movie? I only remembered as we got on the sub that we were doing this, but I remembered what was on them, and then I think they're bookended pretty much on the back, too, to confirm. Um, the things that I have are fighter jets, the aircraft carrier, and the transport bus where they quiz them right where James Gandolfini does the mm-hmm, who's, mm-hmm, who mm-hmm. plays this character in this movie. Those are the three that I have. Do you have something beyond those? Aircraft it carrier, fighter jets, helicopters. Okay. Bus, USS Alabama submarine. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's 
that's pretty mm-hmm. much the list that I had. I, d- yep. I didn't know that there was a helicopter. Like, I didn't see a helicopter. There's helicopters flying around. It also might be, like, in footage because there's, like, a, like, the movie does a really, it is really intent on making this feel like a real thing that there's, like, news footage and, like, you know, Denzel yeah, is at, like, his, his daughter's birthday party and, like, watching CNN and whatever. And, like, there's, like, footage and recreations and whatever. And so, Do you yeah, want to so hear something terrifying? Helicopter- like Saving? I had I had a really terrifying moment when we were at that birthday party because those were very very young children and they are younger than me. Like we were like almost the same age. Like I'm 89, they were like who's born October 90 mm-hmm. in 90, yep. Mm-hmm. And I was like I'm really old. They're very young and we're only a year apart. Ooh. So what do you think of Crimson Tide? Can we talk about the the amazing title and somebody being very clever that day? That it's called. What do you mean? It's called Crimson Tide. Right, they're fighting the Russians, mm-hmm. and they're on the USS Alabama roll tide. It all comes together. It's like it's like I know I'm making fun of it right there, but like honestly, pretty good job. I kind of like it. It's kind of fun. Like you'd be like, oh, I remember exactly what that movie's about, and I remember the name of the submarine that they're on because it's called fucking Crimson Tide. Nailed it. Good job, guys. Overall, I liked it. I thought that I, I thought it was good. It was, like, better than average movie. Like, something I wouldn't, like, be like, oh, you need to go watch this immediately. I like Denzel. If you like Denzel, you've probably seen it or or c- could see it, would see it. Generally pretty good. What did you think about it? I liked – I was surprised. Like, I, I think I would have known – I don't know if I would have known by, like, just by, by knowledge, but, like, I would have been like, oh, Denzel and Gene Hackman. But, like, I was surprised by, like, the depth of the character actors in this. Like, James, Gan- I had no idea James Gandolfini was in this. No. I yeah. had no idea Steve Zahn was in a couple scenes. Like, there's a bunch of people just like, oh. Who's, like, the, who's you know, the kid that's fixing the communications that's also in Sopranos? He, he, he's I looked familiar, it up. I too, think, right? I think that's, is that Danny Nucci? I think that's the guy. And it is the kid from The Sopranos, right? He's like Meadows' boyfriend for like two minutes, like Johnny Sack's kid or Johnny something's kid. I don't know. He's there's a guy. I don't know if it's this guy or not, but like there's a guy who's also in Titanic who plays Fabrizio. I think he plays like Tar- uh, DiCaprio's like buddy, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's who that was. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. He's the that's other guy. guy. Yeah, he's okay. the guy that Denzel sends to go get the keys or like gives the keys to. I think that's the one that plays F- Fabrizio yes do you know who i'm talking about now no i don't remember the the sopranos i, I know what I know no no the about sopranos the kid is is the one that's that's fixing the communicator when he comes up and he does the whole like and he has the like thing on his eye because his eye was split yeah that, so the guy the, the scotty kid right the kid that he's yes, talking to scotty, is scotty. Yep, yeah yeah that one that one i think is the one from sopranos that was like brandon's friend do you remember they was like like he's yeah, so like this is fuck. Lilo Brancato, and this movie plays Petty Officer, Third Class, Russell Vossler, Russell Vossler. That's, okay, fix that. But yeah, he plays uh, Matthew Bevilacqua, an aspiring yes. mobster on The Sopranos. He's yes. also in a Bronx Tale. Yes, in a Bronx Tale, too. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I thought it was. Okay. Whoa. So if you look on his wiki, Lila or Lilo Brancato was an American actor, best known for blah 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 blah. Brancato was a, the second paragraph, even before like we get to like early life. Brancato was arrested in December two thousand five in the Bronx for the murder of police officer Daniel and she had two, it was some last name, who was at home and off duty at the time of his death. He was charged with second degree murder. Jury found him not guilty. Served ten years in prison for attempted burglary. It's like whoa, what? that guy had a life. Wow. So you're in a movie with Denzel, and then you murder a cop in his house and broke in? Apparently, but he's, you know, not guilty of that, but guilty of attempted burglary, sentenced to 10 years in prison. That's insane. Okay, I didn't know that. Wow, okay. We're learning all kinds of stuff today. I like it. That's fun. I do, like, what I think works really well about this, like, I think even not, not knowing what the movie is about when you watch it, it becomes really obvious, but not in a bad way, that, like, they are sowing so many seeds of discontent and conflict between Denzel and Gene Hackman. Like, not just, like, even the from the rip. of kind of racial thing, but also just, like, differences of opinions and differences of things. And one likes differences to talk a lot, and one doesn't like to talk a lot. Exactly. Everything. Yeah, they're showing you that they're dynamic polar opposites. Like, they are, they are completely two different worlds. Yes. And I think it's really good in terms of being, like, Oh, like, this is, like, they're not, like, it's the kind of guys who could get along if either one of them were, like, a little bit less hard-headed, but the movie yep. does a good job of saying, like, no, these guys are, like, there's going to be issues here, and there are issues there, and I think it works really well. I was also surprised, like, not how early, but, like, 
I, you, I, the kind of thing where it's like, oh, Denzel overthrows Gene Hackman's rule, like it comes earlier in the movie than I thought because the, then yes. there's like the, the counter insurgency, right? And there's the counter insurgency yeah. to the counter insurgency. And like there's, it all like happens more quickly than I would have thought, which I appreciate. It's, it's you know, even knowing sort of what it was roughly going to be about, it keeps me on my toes because it's, there's a lot going on when there's not a lot that you really can do other than just like people arguing and fighting with each other on a in submarine a space. Yeah. Yes. This was like the worst three days ever on a submarine too, right? Well, there's like, at one point they say day 12, like they're on the ship for a couple weeks. Yeah, I know. But I mean, like they have like a fire in the galley. They do this fucking training exercise. They're all fighting. There's an insurgency. There's a reinsurgency. They get hit by a missile or they a, submar- by, like a, a yeah. missile and they, they start you know, flooding. Damage, they, they kill they, a bunch s- of people. It's like a pretty bad. This is a rough two weeks on a fucking submarine. I don't know how it normally goes, but it's also funny. Like jumping to the jumping ahead to the very very end, that like when they're in that tribunal, they're like, "Look, you were both right and you were both wrong." It's like, yeah, we know that. Like, but like, what are you gonna do? Like, it just what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, and it's like, okay, you were both right and you were both wrong, but like one of you stopped like mutually assured destruction, Mm -hmm. and the other one wanted to. So. I guess you're both wrong here. You know, you're like, what? Like, Denzel is like the voice of reason, right? Like, we have to be like, okay, like, they were going to blow up the fucking world because he's trigger happy and you well, shouldn't the whole be thing, able to like, do the, that. The, if you've not seen the movie, and again, I'm, I'm assuming most people who listen to the show don't necessarily watch every movie, but like, there's this emergency alert message system that. Like, oh yeah, gets, yeah, we can talk about the plot. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we gets probably should. Messages yeah. from like you know the government or whoever. They get two in rapid succession. They get one that just says Russia's about to crank their shit. Handle this, and then the second one comes in, but it gets interrupted. Yeah, no, no, and, the, and by handle shit, he means launch the nukes. Yeah, fucking go, destroy them. Yeah, just blow them to smithereens. Nukes go. And the second one is like, hey. It, and then it stops. Be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Denzel's like, I think they're canceling. And then Gene Hackman's like, message got cut off. We don't know. The last confirmed message we have says nuke them. We're going to nuke them. And so that's when they fight. I like that there's so there's like the there's the title card or the, whatever the title text, and then there's the closing text where it's like, the, I t- tweeted a picture of this as too fast, but like, there's so much power on these people's shoulders the three most powerful men in the world yes the president of the united states the president of the russian republic and the captain of a u.s nuclear missile submarine and then the movie ends like by the way we realize more yeah we realized that was probably a horrible idea to let this motherfucker control the nukes so like you can't do that anymore only back to two people the president of the united states and the president of russia those are the only two people that can launch nukes now like a different movie and i'm sure one of those other submarine movies that i've mentioned or i mentioned before covers this but like it's not like they have cabin fever like they're not going crazy for being underwater they're just hard-headed assholes who like view one thing that happens in a completely different way right it's not like yep. yeah denzel's like i can't be under here or like gene happens like i can't be under here anymore my dog is going crazy the little jack russell terrier just like pissing around the ship why are there like, so many I, fucking I, dogs in this movie I don't know. I kind of like it, a lot of but dogs. there's a, there's a weird. It's and weird. there's also Denzel as a horse girl. What, when was this? What happened? Denzel what did I miss? talks about horses the entire movie. What? When did he talk about horses? They talk about horses in the beginning. They talk about horses at the end. When they're waiting for the guy to fix the radio. Did I like, black out on the horses? horse? Uh, okay. I must have blacked out all the horses. Dude, references. they talk about horses like five times in this movie. I just, I didn't see any of those. And then at I the very end, after they get out of the tribunal... Gene Hackman says to Denzel, he's like, you were right. And Denzel, like, looks confused. He's like, those horses were from Spain, not from Portugal. Oh, yeah, I remember the horses from Spain, not from Portugal thing. Okay, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, fair. But yeah, no, Denzel's a horse girl. He is. Like, Denzel horse. loves horses. Gene Hackman kind of loves horses, but loves horses kind of, like, in a racist way or, like, whatever. <laughs> I, I, unclear. Okay. But, you know, horses like, are, like, a big deal. Fair enough. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. I think you know this was coming. Was there enough control room in this movie for you, or could it? Could you sprinkle some more in there? No, because what I like it's about the control, control room, room is that it's different, and it's different from the rest of the movie. And the control room in this is just like the whole movie. Like there's no there's no differentiation. Fair, fair. The whole fair, movie's fair. control room. The whole movie's control room. There's no control room. You know what? I was watching this movie, and you know what I was thinking? We need to bring back Bigly. What? 
We need more men standing around singing Motown together. Mm. I wish that there was a list of men standing around singing Motown together list on Letterbox. Well, it's this. It's Remember the Titans. That's it's what I was thinking. Other Denzel movies. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Denzel's in both of those. Mm-hmm. I didn't even remember. I did think immediately of Remember the Titans. But um, I know you won't. At least. It's just like, yeah, okay. Although they're not singing this. They're just lip syncing. One of them. One of them sings. One of them says some words. The rest of them, I think, are lip singing. But yeah. There should be. There probably is a list somewhere of like movies where men bond over Motown. Like there's like like one of the best things about letter mm, debatable depending on the list. But one of the best things about Letterboxd is like the hyper hyper specific list that people make yes. just to kind of be funny. Yeah, this feels like a Mark Hoffmeyer list, right? Like something like this. Like oh yeah, that's my best mo- me- like white guy singing Motown scene in a movie. And you're like, what are you t- what? And you're like, yeah, there's I mean, dozens of them. One list. It's not about white guys singing Motown. But I made one list like that when we were doing the Charlie's podcast. Charlie's Theron movies where she plays an unattainable dream girl yet is paired on screen with a guy who does not respect or deserve her ranked by the order of disparity. <laughs> and it ranks 12 movies. The worst offenders are the two Woody Allen movies. Uh, and the best offender, but still an offender, is Mighty Joe Young, where Mighty Joe Young is abusive to Charlie's, but he still loves Charlie's. And like, <laughs> it's kind of cute, but, you know, you know, ape, whatever. But yeah, like that's like, it, it would be like, Movies in which a white guy sings Motown ranked by how problematic it is. And, and and there's racial tension in the movie. Yeah. I think you have to I think you have to like kind of quell the racial tension with the white guy singing Motown. I think that's the that is the bridge that we need. And I and I'm just saying I think that we need this in movies again. And I think that it should be added to new movies. So if you're listening out there and making a blockbuster film, please add white guy singing Motown. I guess this movie's credit is that, like, it's very clearly, at least partially, about race, but it's not ever really overtly about race until shit really hits the fan. Like, the one point where, like, there's, like, three black guys in this submarine, right, including Denzel, and when one of them turns against Denzel, like, there's a shot where Denzel looks at the guy, and the guy's just like, I'm sorry. Just, like, (laughs) but, like, there's that, and then there's the stuff later where he's talking about, like, those horses are white, and it's like, the horses start black, it's just like... Is this about like it kind of is, but like what's what's the like what's the point you're making here? This is exactly why this is a great movie for the Pluto Dad channel, right? Because it's like it like I think that like you could kind of make your dad think about it, but then he's like, but everybody say, stayed in the end, and we killed like and the Russians lost, so I'm fine with it. You know what I mean? Like this is a movie that like your Pluto watching Dad channel dad would be like, I watched a good movie about racial relations today, and you're like fucking crimson tide that was the the movie that you you're like yep it was good no because it's the kind of movie where like at the end it's like look everything's okay that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> they, they didn't so- denzel was right it's like yeah but he was joking about a thing that like he's still racist like, he's still an <laughs> asshole. exactly that's saying what i'm that saying the thing that like the objective fact that denzel knew and said <laughs> was correct was correct it's like yeah but he said he was right okay yeah, like, look, they got along at the end. You're like, no, they just said goodbye forever. That was like, that was just like, goodbye forever. You got forced into retirement. I'm stealing your ship. And it's like, yeah, but like, it worked out. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, sure, I guess. So with all that said, whose side were you on? <laughs> I, I thought about it for a while. But I think... Because like, like, it's, it's pretty clear, like, Denzel is right, but I'm like, but Gandolfini's on the other side. You know what I mean? So like, are you going to go Tony Soprano? Are you going to go against the family? I think Tony Soprano... I mean... We've watched enough Sopranos to know that Tony Soprano probably wasn't on the correct side mm-hmm. of anything. Mm-hmm. So I think being against James Gandolfini was probably a good call from the rip, right? right. Like, it, just like as soon as I saw him, I was like, hmm, I got a strong feeling that uh, James Gandolfini is going to be in the wrong here. And then he sees the black guy and is like, start doing push ups. And I was like, I have a strong feeling James Gandolfini is probably going to be in the wrong here at some point. Like, that's that's what mm-hmm. this seems like this is leading to. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, the only kid whose side I'm on is the kid fixing the fucking communicator, man. He's he's the one. Like, we need Jesse down there, Tej down there, just fixing the communicator. And like, he's the only one that like can save the world. It's him. Denzel tells him. Dude, the world is in your in your hands now. I do like that in the face of all of this tension and all of this animosity and like both sides pulling guns on one another, both sides are like, we'll give this kid three minutes. It's like, that doesn't seem like a lot of time, but they're like both like, yeah, three minutes seems totally fair. 
Three minutes seems fair. There's some lights blinking down there. I think he's almost close. And he gets it seemingly like right under the wire. And they're like, yeah, d- don't do anything about it. Yeah, because we never see what the message says, right? They just like get it and they're just like, yeah, d- don't launch the nukes. No, no, the, they, they read the message. The message is like, yeah, stand down. Okay, cool. Okay. I just thought that they handed it to them because when they hand it to them, they all just like read it, but then they don't like show you. They showed you. No, no, they 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 communicate like he they read it from like over the radio. Oh yeah, no, he doesn't read them. He just says like we please cancel all nuclear launches. Like not like the message. There's there's no way this movie ends with them firing the nukes. Yeah, yeah. This is part of my reason why I'm like it's a good movie. It's not like a great movie because like if they did fire the nukes, I'd be like sick. That'd be kind of fun. Right, like you know that they're not gonna blow up Russia. Well, so like, what's also kind of funny, like from again from Walt's book, there's a thing where he talks about how like sports movies offer this like variability where like every in almost every movie the hero wins, but in sports movies the hero can lose. And I was always like, like the reason I I'm always a little tired of sports movies is because like there's only two ways that they can end. But like thinking about it, I'm like, well, there's only really one way that almost every other movie ends, and it's the it's good wins, right? It's not like so. Yes, my, my the hero, but sports in sports movies, movies is great because like the hero can lose, he can get mm-hmm. injured, he mm-hmm. can mm-hmm. he can mm-hmm. get injured and come back, he can get injured and never play again. Like he can always be the hero in any of these situations. It doesn't but, matter. But like. Aside from very few movies, one of which I'm not going to say my name because it, it spoils the movie that I told you. Actually, I'll, I'll bleep it up. Like sometimes movies end where the hero doesn't win. You're like, oh, no. Like, but like that's what yeah. makes them special. Like here it's like there's no way a mainstream Hollywood production, Bruckheimer and Simpson, directed by Tony Scott about Denzel, racial tensions underwater. James Gandolfini is going to have the U.S. get nuked. Yeah, exactly, yeah. In the final 10 minutes of the movie, it's like, well, you should have nuked him because we got nuked and now we're all dead. <laughs> that would that would have been the best ending of this movie, though. That they just, like, come up and de- they're like, and Gene Ackman's like, fucking told you. Well, that's what's funny because, like, they're, cause they, what Denzel, I think it's Denzel or one of them says to the kid, just like, look, I know it's not fair, but you got an hour to fix this because otherwise 900 million people are going to die. Just like, yes. it's Denzel talking, when it's in the Scotty conversation. Yes, like, exactly. No pressure, but if you don't, if you don't do it, a billion people are going to die. Yeah, like, that's what I said. Just like, the, like the, 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 the fate of humanity is in this kid's hand with uh-huh. a soldering gun. And you're like, do it. Although that would be a good sequel to this where like the U.S. gets nuked and the only Americans left are the people on the submarine and they have to like rebuild America with the racial tensions knowing that like Denzel was wrong. Oh. Maybe not a good movie. <laughs> maybe not a good – now that I said it out loud, maybe not a good movie. I think We're... Tarantino did write that movie. Mm, he's like, what if – what if, what if we have the, the sequel out. and he's like, and there's no women – racial tension and the black guy was wrong he's like i bet i could say the n-word so loud in this movie (laughs) like i'm not i wasn't surprised but like they they say fuck a few times like every time i'm just like oh i guess this is rated r but like it feels like you it's it's a very tame r it's a very tame r i know you could have made this pg-13 and like probably made like a lot more money but they're like no we need this to be serious um i have a question for you this is all Mm -hmm. i could think about once it came into my head while watching the movie. We have never said it before. Should we add Denzel to the Fast and the Furious? I'm almost positive we've said this before. Have we? I think we've said every major actor. Okay. I don't remember sure, like, us Aaron saying or someone has said it like Okay. I don't remember saying Denzel <laughs> being there before. But if we did cast Denzel in the movie, what role would you give him? Because well, I, we I have talk, a very specific this, idea. I have a very specific idea. We talked about this with the full throttle franchise people that, like, aside from Momoa, basically every major addition to the franchise in the last, like, handful of movies since The Rock has been white. Um, so oh, yeah, I don't yeah. Think they're going to add Denzel. Are you saying that he should be Roman's dad? No. Who should he be? I think that he would be Mr. Nobody's boss. Oh, oh! I have another idea. What if he's the president? We have no idea who the president is in the Fastiverse. Th- that's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's the president. Denzel would be Mister Nobody's boss, and like his mm. right hand man, like a secret, like cabinet member, essentially. Interesting. 
Yeah, I think Mister No. I think Mister Nobody takes his orders from Denzel in the Fast and the Furious universe. And he's oh, and Rachel dubbed him Mister Somebody when I ran it by this. When I ran it oh, Mister Somebody. Yeah, he's Mister Somebody. Oh, also Brixton is you know Idris Elba's not white, but also they like he's he got rocked. He's in Hobbs and Shaw, and And he's in Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. Yeah, I can see that. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I think that'd be like a good way to like bring him in to like let him be like. And then I told him no. And then like that's it. like that's all you need. Denzel like he doesn't need to be in the whole movie, right? Because we have too many characters. It would be like a great place to be like, yeah, that's my boss. Like, Although with like with each passing movie that we don't get Mr. Mr. Nobody back, with that we don't get Kurt Russell back, I like a part of me is just like we're never gonna see him again. Like why would we get his boss? Like we're never like just like run of different things. Like I know he has to come back, but like the fact that he didn't intend, I'm just like we're never gonna get him. Yeah, I think that too. I think that's like a secret, silent, like Kurt Russell retired or something. Well, no, Kurt Russell's in the new Godzilla show, which we're talking about. It's all we're oh, talking God about damn it. on next week. So then, why the fuck isn't he in Fast and the Fe- Okay, so they, I've told you, Big Bad. It's, it all comes back to that. They're just saving I him was for the end. Surprised back to Crimson Tide that the Jack Russell that Gene Hackman's dog doesn't really play a role in this. Like he doesn't like get in the trouble. He just like pisses on like the and like barks at some guys once. Yeah. But otherwise, he's just like hanging with Gene Hackman while he reads books. And didn't stuff. you? Didn't you think that like this Jack Russell would be like the one that like had taken the key or like brings uh-huh. the key to him? Like it would. Maybe it, that's it like makes too sense. goofy, wacky, like kids comedy. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. But I, I agree with you. I'm a hundred percent. Like I was like, oh, this Jack Russell's gonna like save the day or ruin the day, you know, or like almost ruin the day, whatever. Mm-hmm. Nope, just nope. a dog, just a dog on a submarine. It's just like this is a quirky thing for the guy to have. It's like okay. Although he should have had something like cooler like an cooler iguana. than a dog or cooler than a jack russell like an like an iguana or something i think that like I, maybe that's a little weird back to like you know reptile kids or something i mean but, i think it's 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 like it's difficult to have any kind of like that dog's gonna be so bored out of his mind like you're on the you're on the ship for like weeks or months where like, does it no, piss well he where pisses, is he, the... we see it we see it piss but i mean like generally like where does he take the dog wherever to to wherever, the... wherever he wants to piss that's horrible. This is like if you had this dog on an aircraft that's flying for two months. You know what I mean? You'd be like, that's not nice. Don't mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. That's borderline animal cruelty, I think. It's just weird to make a not a big deal about it, but like to include it as a plot point and then not really do anything with it. Like I agree. I agree. Because there's yeah. not like there's not stuff there's not like others like this is a pretty overall tight script where there's like everything that gets like that happens gets paid off like everything gets set up yes, and paid off whatever right. just like yes and then there's a dog it's like okay and it's like that's there's it. a dog on a submarine mm-hmm. isn't that crazy it's like yeah that's why this is a dad movie because your dad would be like look there's a dog on a submarine and you'd be like what does it do and you're like uh huh i don't know it's a dog on a submarine it's like yeah he's okay. a jack russell look at how smart that dog is and you're like what is the is the dog no thanks dad Glad I came into the room to watch this part of the thing while I was in the middle of doing something. One of the Under Siege movies, maybe the first Under Siege is on a submarine. Steven Seagal. Someone ah. in, the, in, the, in the Discord was just talking about Under Siege 2, which stars Katherine Heigl as Steven Seagal's daughter. Nice. Yes. But like, yeah, there's there's a lot of submarine movies out there. Like, I just, like, I'm glad we watched this because I, I, I had been meaning to watch it. But I'm just wondering if this was, like, the right one to do. I mean, we can, you know. It's fine. Forever, we'll I know. I, I, like... You cut in a nice Denzel movie for me. True, it was fun. This is a, this is a decent it's not movie. Bad. It's, it's just it's not you know. like I said. It's not bad. I wouldn't be like you have to go see this movie immediately, but not bad. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I just kind of wish it was wackier. Same, but Same. like let that, let that dog get some high drinks. What if it was like more like Space Camp? I think that that's the ultimate version of what this should be. Where the submarine descends and the only thing on board is the dog. <laughs> it's like the dog and six children. Mm-hmm. And they also have access to the nuclear codes. Honestly, I'd watch it. That's what I'm saying. That, that is, I think that that's just... Co- oh, and like Denzel. It's like Denzel... It's Denzel, a dog, and six kids. And six kids, yeah. I. What is the movie Down Periscope about? I don't remember. Read it is to that Pauly Shore? No, that's Rob Schneider. Maverick uh, Navy Lieutenant Commander Tom Dodge will never be a textbook officer, but he's a brilliant seaman who's always wanted to command a nuclear submarine. He's been given one last chance to clean up his record. Unfortunately, 
Admiral Graham, his nemesis, would rather sink the fleet than give Dodge his own boat. This is very serious. Where's the comedy? So Graham stacks the deck against him and decides Dodge to the Stingray, a diesel-powered World War II submarine that can barely keep afloat. Okay, so it's like a crummy boat. To make matters worse, Dodge's crew is a collection of maladjusted, mistake-prone misfits. Then he's tagged the enemy in a crucial war game in order to take on the U.S. Navy's best. Sounds about right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I have two people who I follow on Letterboxd who have rated it. One gave it one star. Oh, Haley gave it one star. And a friend of mine named Frank gave it one and a half stars. People do not like Down Periscope, so I'm glad we did not watch Down Periscope. Yeah, works for me. Any other thoughts about Crimson Tide? Uh, No, I cut all mine in as we were talking, bud. Then let us watch the trailer. Crimson Tide 1995 official HD trailer 1080p posted by The Film Blog. It's what, a, is, what is this? I don't know, but the, sub, the, the description is in German, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. trailer courtesy of the video editing guy. Hold on. No, this might be not. This might not be the right one. Hold on. Crimson Tide. Hans Zimmer did the score. He did. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Let's do this one. I don't know if this is the right one or not. This is now Crimson Tide 1995 trailer. Gene Hackman, Denzel Washington posted by Trailer Chan. I don't know if any of these are the real ones. This is the top hit, though. This looks this looks like a trailer to this movie. All you need to convince me it's official the official trailer, which is put the words official trailer in the headline, it's just like or the title is just like, yeah, you know, the official trailer. We should, we should title seconds. we should title all of our episodes of the podcast official trailer. Dude, everybody already thinks they're the movies. I don't want to get more spam comments like not the movie motor mouths. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Hasn't happened in a while though. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm ready whenever you are. 24 bud. seconds. Three, two, one, play. As you no doubt heard, my exo has been a exo is name was at the top of the list. executive officer. I looked that up. Oh yeah. It was a short list. Yeah, he likes his cigars. I like that. I mean, obviously Denzel's a great actor, but what I like that he brings to this is like there's like there is like quiet. Like he just like like that's the yes. whole thing. Like Gene Hackman's like you don't always have to think about things. Like it's nice to have like an action movie which is like. Just give us a second to think about things. was 32 and a half years ago during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So this is what it's all about, gentlemen. It's what we train for. Submerge the ship. Diving officer, submerge the ship. Yeah, I guess when I see the size of this submarine, it was probably close to the size of the one in Hawaii. Like, they're not huge, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But there's, like, a bunch of dudes on there. A whole bunch. Oh, we got movie voice. That's cool. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like really cool, and I think that's like that's like the way to make like underwater like submarine movies look cool is like just have like crazy lighting. Like there's like blue light and green light and red light and just like okay. Yeah, I guess it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh oh. Oh, Viggo Mortensen's in this movie? We have not yes, talked about yeah, him. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And we're wrong. What's left of Russia is going to launch at us. I'm captain of this boat. I don't have to think this over. There's no time for doubt. Where's this boxing arena that's in the... I don't know. It's probably like a closet somewhere. Yep. They show it like in one scene. It's also funny, I mean, like, I actually was surprised when it gets hit and they have to, like, sacrifice those guys, but it's like, there's no way that one of these missiles is going to hit the sub. Like, we can't sink the sub. Like, I know you need that to, like, ramp up the tension, but... Yeah. It's also insane to me, like, it feels like shooting guns on a submarine is as crazy as shooting guns on an airplane, where it's like, you, if you miss... It depressurizes. Like, if you miss here, like, everyone dies either way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, well, they're, like, very close to the top, too. You know, they're just, like, right... Because he says, like, take me to, like, 1.5 feet or whatever, so... God help us all. There's, like, two different feet. Like, there's 78 feet down. There's 150 feet down, which is, like, one's for shooting and one's for messages. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're pretty close. And then other times, they're like, we're going down in a hurry. we got to figure this shit out. Otherwise, we're all going to, like, submersible, you know, implode on us, right? So... Okay, so the letterbox game. So for reference sake, Mad Max Fury Road, one of the most popular films on Letterboxd. Sequel. Prequel. Furiosa. Trailer out now. Mad Max Fury Road, 1.6 million. Oh, really? Million. They, they released the trailer when? Anya Taylor-Joy as Furiosa. Really? Oh, mm -hmm. very cool. Okay. I didn't know that. When did it come out? Like this the week? The trailer came out in the past week. Okay. 
I missed it. Wow. The movie, Very... I think, is either it's coming out, I think, next year sometime. Awesome. Um, I think the trailer came out maybe last Thursday. I don't know how I haven't heard about like it since 30th? then. Okay, weird. Hideo Kojima, the one of the top video game guys, like he tweeted, just like, I've seen this more than 100 times already. And she was like, okay. The movie? No, the, tra- the trailer. Uh, okay. Fury Road 1.6 million times logged. Crimson Tide, directed by Tony Scott, starring Denzel, Gene Hackman, Matt Craven. A name I don't know. He plays Roy Zimmer, older guy. He's an X-Men, Few Good Men, Jacob's Ladder, a bunch of stuff we've covered. Okay. Has been seen by how many people? Uh, I'm going to say... Every single poster that you can change your change the poster on letterbox to, every single poster is red. Like, we have a theme. We're going with it. Um... 63,000 people. You are so close. Really? 67,000 people. Excellent. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That was that was a hard game. That, that was, that was hard. really I thought you were going to be like way off. But... Same. I did too. I really, really did too. So, congrats. Oh, cheers. We're both drinking Pure Leaf. I just saw. Subtly. Cheers. Sweet lemon. Oh, you cheers got to the original. that. Yeah. yeah, I go unsweet. But cheers to me getting so close on the first guess there, bud. Average rating of a 3.8, most common a 4, then a 3.5, then a 3. How many of those 67,000 people have this in their top four favorite films of all time? What percentage of Letterboxd is old white dads? Mm -hmm. Or possibly old black dads, because Denzel's Mm. in it. Maybe double my guess. Um, hmm. Uh, 13. You are way too low. Uh, 58. You are way too low. One more guess. 112. 120 people have this in their top four Who's favorite Who's so bonered films. about this movie? That's crazy. A Denzel lovers? Is it a lot of... De- go ahead. What is it? I don't know. We're going to go to Gabe at That's what Average I'm Guy on Letterboxd. Average Watched Guy? It last summer. Man, thank God Russia isn't real. Four and a half stars. <laughs> Excellent review. Can great Gabe, thank you. Not many times you guys really get me, but that was a great one. From El Salvador, his profile picture, not a movie in his top four, is Jake Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. Cool. So, okay. There's that. It kind of looks like Brad Pitt in Fight Club, but that's also not a top four. Any Crimson given Sunday. Time. Training day. No. Although, I will say... Because I'm thinking he's a Denzel. Like, I I can't imagine why Denzel's this... Denzel's in none of these movies. Fuck! Okay. So Okay. Okay, All right, the reason I picked this number one is because our guest last episode, Kate Hudson, her favorite movie is this guy's favorite movie. Con Air. Con Air number one. K, K, K. No, okay, that, sorry, sorry. I meant okay. Like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. Speaking of that three-letter acronym, though, there is another movie in here with a man starring a man we've talked about before with racial tensions between a white man and a black man, but it's an action movie starring a man we've covered in this episode. Quentin Tarantino. Nope. No, he's not Different starring. Problematic white starring. guy. Different pl- problematic white guy. That we talked about earlier. White guy and a black guy. Start of an action franchise. Problematic? In real life or in the movie? Both? Both. Mostly in real life. Mel Gibson! Uh-huh. What's the action movie? Action uh, franchise. White guy, black guy. Start of a franchise. Huge movie. Beverly Hill Cop? Is that what it was? No, what is he in? Fuck, what is it? That's Eddie Murphy, you racist I know. fuck. I know. But I know, but I'm trying to think of which one Mel Gibson was in. Fuck. Not that one. I know. What What is it called, though? God damn it. I don't... I can't remember it. I will tell you that Always Sunny parodies these movies. I'm sure. I don't... I can't think of the name of it. I could see Mel Gibson, like... Is he, like, running on the poster? It feels like he's running on the poster. Not the default poster. Fuck. Okay. I don't know. Go ahead. It's him what and Danny it? Glover. Yes. Da- him and Danny Glover. What is it? Getting too uh, old for this shit. Yes. Fuck. I don't... I can't think of the name of it. Go ahead. It's four movies. It? At least four in the franchise. Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon. Okay, got there. And then number two is a very long movie that is the name of a president. Are you American history quizzing me now? What is this fucking It's AP? a very famous president. It's a very fa- <laughs> There's There's not that many movies that are also names of presidents about that Lincoln. president. Nope. Uh... Hmm. I wonder how many movies you can name that are president names. That's one. 
That's what I'm, I I don't know. That's what I'm saying. What what movies? I don't do. I don't give a fuck about presidential movies or history. Well, this I'll tell is you like, that Gabe's review says unironically one of the greatest movies ever made. Why are where, what's ironic? I mean, I, it, English might not be his first language. I don't really dunk on him, but like, yeah, what's ironic about this? Starring Kevin Costner, Tommy Lee Jones, Gary Oldman, Kevin Bacon, Michael Rooker, Jack Lemmon, Laurie Metcalf, Sissy Spacek, Joe Pesci, John Candy. Pruitt Taylor Vince, Walter Matthau, Sally Kirkland, Don Sutherland, Donald Sutherland, Ed Asner, Vincent D'Onofrio, Wayne Knight. Vincent D'Onofrio is in it too? Name another famous president. George Washington. Yeah, everybody's favorite movie, George Washington. That's what I'm saying. I can't fucking think of him. Movie came out 20 years, 30 years ago, 1991. Not Jefferson. Mm Mm-mm. Keep keep working through. Famous president. I know they're all famous. I know that's the point of being a president. Not the point of being president, but like this is a top five president in terms of fame. In terms of who weekly, who and them, this is definitely one of our themiest presidents. I will say his wife also has a movie named after her. Oh, JFK. JFK and okay. Jackie. Yes. Con Air, JFK, Crimson Tide, Lethal Weapon, Gabe. Don't know if he has kids or not. Gabe's a dad. I um yes he is he would see the Pluto dad channels for him the JFK things like I like watching the things about like the grassy no one like was there two shooters but like actually learning about JFK don't care I really don't well, care is, about these guys this is oh. not uh, uh, this is not about learning about JFK it's not like a bio like biopic uh, but that's why I didn't watch this movie to begin with though I mean like I want like the documentary things like I don't want a drama about this Oppenheimer's about as close as I will get to like that world okay. of things yeah like the i don't know i'm not a big american history guy i think you guys know that that's not like uh something that i really care about wars for the most part, battles geography things i just don't care about dad shit dad shit <laughs> i i am the anti-dad yes Starting in with many dad ways shit, with dad shit. many many ways i am the anti-dad yes our next episode next week will be Life in the Fast Lane. We're back on our regularly scheduled grind there. Life in the Fast Lane number 21 for Too Fast, Too Furious, Minute 96. I feel like we just did one. See, like, we didn't do one, and it felt like seven years that we have done one, and now it feels like we did one, like, three days like ago. we're doing another one already, but yeah, we did Hobbs and Shaw last week. We're doing Crimson Tide now, and we got Fast, fast Lane next week. It makes total sense. I get it. By design. I get it. I get it. But it's like, this one feels like it, it came up real quick. Yeah. Considering how long the last one felt I know. like. Would you say it got here in the fast lane? Also, ah. we have a shout out to our patrons. Cassie Wilson, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of Ooh. High School Slumber Party. Wes Hampton, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden Renato, D. Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, Tom Price, Mike Gallier, Josh Buckley of Whole Lot of Wolves, yep. Michael Moser, Christian Larson, Taryn New One, Aaron Willows, and Natalie Absolute, Randy Carter, Josh Goularm. Past guest, now on the family, and oh. Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Montez. Montez. Thank you all for supporting us the $5 a month level or above. If you want to join that list of illustrious, beautiful, wonderful human beings, too fast, too forever.com, or just join the Patreon or anything else. But Joe, before I do our sign-off, any other thoughts about Crimson Tide or anything else before we come back next week for Fastlane? I want a young Denzel in Fast and the Furious so bad. Well, Denzel's son is an actor. We could just have John David Washington in there, even though he's not no. a great actor. No. You want, you I want, want an AI young Denzel. I want I want this aged, like this considered young Denzel to play a cop in Fast and the Furious so bad. I think there's so also bad. something special, and it's not necessarily just a Denzel thing, because it's not like I've seen every Denzel movie, but there's something cool about being like, oh, there's like a movie from this guy's like young prime that I've just not seen. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it's it, like not even that it's like it's decent, but it's not like, oh, this isn't this isn't great. That's why you probably haven't seen it. But it's like, yeah, he was still in his prime. Mm-hmm. He was cranking out movies. This is it's good. He's great. So, yeah. And I think it's like the 90s were great for like a lot of movies like Along Came a Spider, which I think is Morgan Freeman or like I love the Bone Collector with Denzel. It's just like, yes, movies aren't good, but they're just like they're like they're movies. They're movie ass movies. They're movie ass movies. And those dudes are movie in. 
For all things Too Fast 2 Forever, go to cageclub.me, facebook.com slash Too Fast 2 Forever, or at Too Fast 2 Forever on X, Instagram, threads. We're not posting on threads, YouTube, wherever. Email us, family at cageclub.me. We'll read those emails on the next episode, so please get yes, those we will. in. Yeah. Family at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at Too Fast 2 Forever.com and our store at cageclub.me slash shop and come back next week for episode 333, Life in the Fast Lane. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe 2, not 3. And we will tell you, Joe 3, remember Joe Reed? He went away. We will tell you all about it when we see you again.